Hello, my name is Lindsay. Welcome to Mama Schmooze Homeschool Reviews. I am a homeschool mom of two. I have a son in kindergarten and a daughter in second grade, and this will be our fourth homeschool year, which to me sounds really crazy because when I started my homeschool journey, I was doing um, some YouTube videos on it and doing other YouTube videos, and I decided to really consolidate all my videos and just specifically focus on homeschool because I love sharing about it here on my channel. So if you are new to my channel, and you came over from Saida from Precious Years or you came over from Tanya um, from Project Happy Home, welcome. On my channel, I share a lot about our homeschool planning, my curriculum choices at the end of the year. I like to share some of our morning basket ideas, how we put together a unit study, and then throughout the school year, I like to give a homeschool update every month, sharing with you guys what's working for us and what's not working for us. But in today's video, um, Saida from Precious Years is going to be sharing her homeschool planning on her digital planner which is called homeschool panda and she is actually the creator and developer of the software program and it is a awesome app that you can get on your phone or you can use it on your computer and it's for those who want to put everything on their computer or phone and take pictures and um, you can do everything online so she's gonna be sharing how she does her homeschool planning I cannot wait to watch her video and then also my friend Tanya from project happy home that has created this homeschool planning Palooza series with me will be sharing her homeschool planner and how she put her homeschool planner together this year which is gonna be a little different from all the other years so I am so excited to see how she has put her homeschool planner together so what I start doing at the beginning of I would say April since I have a YouTube channel I'd like to get my curriculum sent to me earlier than most homeschool moms because I like to share it with you guys on here and so that is what I did this year I used the composition notebook and I put my homeschool brain dump of all my subjects I put Bible language math geography science and history which are my rotation subjects and then I have our morning basket electives down here. I have art, Spanish, world culture, poems, and then I also um, forgot to put music, but that's what we do. We put, we're doing music this year as well. So for every little tab, I just have the subject and then I have little checkoff boxes. So whatever we already have in our homeschool library that I want to use for our curriculum for the year, I write down and I check off. The new ones that I want to get, I just put new in parentheses, and then whenever I get the material in the mail, I'll check it off. So this is just my little way of keeping things organized and writing down my curriculum choices. I watch a lot of YouTube videos to see what others are getting, or I might be interested in certain books that I look at on thriftbooks.com, and they catch my eye, and I try to see if there's videos on it. If there's not, I'll like go on Amazon to look at the PDF to see what is inside the book, and then... That a lot of times I find a lot of really good books on thriftbooks.com or Amazon that I have not seen before and I will share it with you guys here on my channel. So this is our morning basket ideas, some like um, things that I've already gotten that I haven't checked off like the art book for children and some poetry books like Sing a Song of Popcorn I got so I had to check off on that. Some safety and health books I have and then here I didn't fill it out that much but I have my second grade um, reader list for her so I put two books down but I'm gonna make this a lot larger probably in my planner so these were just some books that I thought of that she's gonna be reading and then some of the read out louds that I want to do for this year which I actually already have a list of books that I'm gonna be reading for this year and that's in my um, curriculum choices video so if you haven't seen that yet I'll link that down below for you guys and then so I have lots of just notes in here um, that I write really fast that are going to be going in my planner, like uh, our math and our language books and how much more we have left of them for first grade for my daughter. Um, some of like the, the schedules of like our school and when we're not going to do school and I have our quarters from first to second and third and fourth quarter. And then I like to put like our rhythm and some thoughts and goals for my kindergartner and goals for my second grader. And then um, I just have like lots of things that I try out on here first before I put it in my planner. So I really like this idea of a school routine, like a timeline. So um, it's from seven to three o'clock and I put like wake up, get dressed, chores, breakfast, morning basket. And um, this I like first did in here, but then I like put the master page in my planner because this is just more of like a book where I can like 
brainstorm and put like my brain dump thoughts on here and then I don't have to have it all pretty. So that is basically what I have in that book. This is the Purple Trail Planners Teacher Planner and there's two layouts that you can get. So I got the layout where it showed Monday through Friday. You can also get a teacher planner that's Monday through Sunday. So it's up to you guys how you would like it. And then I just added our homeschool name which is Hands On Academy and the year of the planner. And then this is all customizable by the way. The cover you can actually put a quote, a Bible scripture, your mission statement, which would be awesome, or your vision on the cover here. And then you can also do whatever you want on here. I just decided to do like a dry erase approach to it. And it was just like a last minute decision. I kind of just liked it plain because it's minimal and it's not busy, but I thought it'd be fun to have like a brain dump there. So I put a permanent marker title up there and then you can always erase it with a dry erase marker. So for right now, I just have my post-it notes um, that I use to set up my planner. So before I get into my planner and make a lot of mistakes, which I have already done, <laughs> you will notice in the month of May, um, I like to use these post-it notes. And what I mean by that is that I have a little note section here. And so when I have little ideas that I want to do on my note section or anywhere in my planner, I'll just write like table of contents, for instance, I want it right here. And then I have like lots of ideas that I have done in my notebook here and I've used all of these little tabs and post-it notes to put in the back so that it'll keep me on track of what my ideas are and how I want to set it up before I actually put pen to the paper and mess something up like I have done in the past. So I want to get into the planner so you guys can see what it looks like and do a flip through and also share with you guys how I will be utilizing this planner and how I'll be planning out the year. So I usually don't fill this part out but you can always put a really nice quote on here and glue it to that. Um, this part is blank, so you can always write on this as well. And so this is one of my favorite pages. It's so simple, but I like the holidays and the 2019-2020 layout where it's side by side and you can see exactly what's going on for this year and what you need to plan for next year. And I just check off the dates, or you can highlight the dates, but I thought checking it off makes it just a little bit more minimal and simple. But I just kind of follow the year. I got my planner in May, so I just checked off um, all the way up to the holiday of the 4th of July, Independence Day. And then on this spread, it's the calendar attendance where I literally just highlight in yellow the time that we do school. And then I also circle the days that my husband's off and that we probably most likely won't be doing school. And then I cross out uh, the lines where we have vacations. So for instance, for the summer months, for June and July, I crossed off, as you can see, like the dates that we're not going to be doing school. We might not have like vacation per se. We might have a staycation, um, but it's just noted in here. So I know all the days and weeks that we are doing school. And I put the weeks that we have, um, that we've done school right here. So this month of January, we were at the 23rd week at the end of the month. And then for February, we we're at the 27th week. And I just do it like that. I used to put like 20th, 21st, 22nd, but it was just too much so I just put like the end of the week that we left off on for the month. This is what it looks like. Um, this page is usually blank. So I'll show you what it looks like. It's usually blank. It doesn't have any like title up at the top. It's a blank note page. And then you have your month with your tab and it's like color coordinated throughout the that section. So this was just an idea. My May and June um, planners are usually the times where I kind of create like what layout I want and what it's what I want it to look like and I kind of like just make things that might be a little extra <laughs> and I might not do it all throughout the year but I wanted to see how like my stencils are working out and all that good stuff so I got some stencils that I really like and so I made a little circle here with a stencil and I use a ruler and I put May and it was the 35th through the 39th week of our homeschool and I just put um, one thing at a time sticker right there because I had an I actually like messed up on here and so I just thought it'd be fun to have things that we can do once a month that I want to implement in our homeschool and things that we have been doing like our unit study we did Mr. Popper's Penguins in May our month focus which is language arts and math I have two little book stencils there with our read out louds for our second grader and then read out louds for our family and then I have this little uh, stencil for our games and poetry tea time I would like to write one letter a month and have a party school um, activity and then music day, cooking and baking day, and then I have nature time. So I just thought it was fun to like set this up and see if this is something 
that I want to do at the beginning of my month. Now for June, I decided to just put June reflections or I can erase it because I have the friction pens and then make it like what we want to work on for the next month. Or I can make like three different sections and have goals, reflections, memories. So I want to show you guys what I did for um, the month of June. Um, usually has like birthdays on the title right there, but instead of birthdays, I stenciled in books. So all of our read out louds and my second grade readers books should go in this section. That's what I'm thinking of doing. And then in this section, I'm just going to keep it events. So if we go to the zoo, if we go to a field trip, I put all of that in here. And then I think in this area, I really want to have it just for unit study. I had a reading log for my second grader here, but I'm going to combine it. So I think I'm just going to keep this as a unit study because when I get evaluated at the end of the year, I want to make sure I could just glance at every single like month and then just see what we've done as far as like the highlights of what we've done. Um, if we've done a unit study, what books we've read and what activities we've done will be all here. And so that also along with my notes page, I did like my unit study for June and July in here. I could glance at that as well. So that is how that's going to work out. Um, let me show you guys what the layout looks like. So I always put my little, well, here I put week 36. I should have put week 37 here, but I put the week up here. And then this is what it looks like plain. Like there's nothing fancy. I just use all my friction pens. I have like a red one on this row. I put a purple one with this purple column. And then I just color coordinated it for every, um, day and I think it looks really really nice I love the rainbow color it's like bright and cheery There's two options this layout is Monday through Friday and then they also have a Monday through Sunday so if you guys prefer to have seven days in the week you can do that as well but I think when I went with this option it gave me more space to have more subjects but you'll have to look at my link um, I'll put your, the Purple Trail Planner website for you guys to check I it out. I customized so. the headers at the top. So I put morning basket, and I kind of went through the flow of our day. So I put whatever we start with first, first, and whatever we do last, last. So I did morning basket, language arts. Um, we have our math here, reading, all of our read out louds and all of her readers that she's reading, our rotation box of science, history, and geography, and I did art, music, and Spanish here. And then the last row I just left open for activities. So if we go to the library, or we do a science class somewhere, or we do a field trip, or a play date, I write these all down here. And whenever I don't do anything on a specific subject, I'll just cross it off so I know that we just didn't touch on that. So this is how I really like it to look. It's like plain. And then let me show you guys how I tried like adding color to it by using like highlighters. So this page, I tried to use highlighters in between the lines to make it colorful and to kind of go with the color. And I thought that was really nice. I don't have to use washi tape. And I did a little bit of stenciling right here, which was fun. I don't know if I'll have time throughout the year to do stenciling, but like I said, these are my little trial and error pages for May and June. And then in June, I have, let's see. In June, I did washi tape with like aqua and pink at the bottom. And I thought it looked really, really pretty. So this is, like I said, this is like a summer month, so we didn't have a lot of stuff going on this week, but I thought it looked really, really nice. All right, so let me get into the monthly planner with you guys, because I did not do that. All this so real estate here for your notes. So this is all the notes that I had for that month, and then I put my happy planner stickers here that are all the holidays, and then um, just the customizable stickers I got from Purple Trail Planner that they have now, which are really, really great. So... We did a lot of co-op and library and parks for the month of May because the weather was beautiful. So I just put all of the little banner stickers there and then I did co-op and then I wrote what we did for the co-op um, below. And then when I put park, sometimes I put like the park and the group that we spent time with, like our homeschool group. So that's what I did for the month of May. And it looks really, really pretty. Um, for the month of June, it looks different because we didn't have co-op and field trips and it's the summer and my daughter did like VBS and her cousin was in town. So it doesn't look as full of the stickers as the other one did. We did lots of movies, all the programs at the library. I wanted to write in here so I can stay on top of the schedule and I didn't want to miss out on anything. And then all the ideas and field trips I put in the notes section here for the summer and then the reading programs over here. And so that is basically what I did for um, 
that section and that's how I'm going to keep it. I also tried using a stencil for the weather for each day and I want to stick with that. I think that's what I'm going to do with all the space here is just put the weather. I thought that was super cute. So that's basically what it looks like for each month and I'll show you some of the the colors. September is green. October is like a really nice blue and so as you can see this is what it looks like with nothing written in it. January, let's do January, it's like darker blue for the winter and it's very very pretty. Now you can also go with um, the black and white theme which is neutral and then it has no color in it at all. I almost went with that but I really like my colors so the tabs are black and white and then the calendars are black and white and then the spreads for the week are all black and white which is really nice if you want to do your washi tapes and you want to do your own theme you can do that. February is purple, March is like a, a violet, April is like a coral and then this is where you can add add-ons to the back and you can make it as thick as you want or as thin as you want. I wanted to keep my planner thin so I just added a notes page. They also have like a grids page which I have my um, here, like a dotted grid page right here. So this is what the dotted grid page looks like. It's like a bullet journal, so you can do the dotted grid as well. You get 36 note pages, so which is perfect for like what I was gonna use it for. And then um, you also have a pocket folder with a pocket folder in the front and then a pocket folder in the back. So I'm gonna go through like the most important part of my planner that I really worked hard on, which is the note section. And so I added a little pair of glasses there for my happy planner stickers. And I have a little note here, um, like I was saying at the beginning, I have all these post-it notes that I had originally in my notes section to help me set up my planner without making a big huge mess. So I'm going to try to do the table of contents here. And I have the word of the year, which is fun, which you can tell on this page, it's very colorful and bright. I use some happy sticker little trackers here and check off um, stickers. So for every like 10 weeks here, I wanted to do a fun milestone like celebration and then for the next 20 weeks, it will be 100 days, so we'll do a treat on that um, 10 weeks. And then for the week of 21 through 36, I want to do a huge celebration at the end of the year. Um, kind of like what we did this year, we did like a summer um, summer of school party, which was so fun. Uh, we went to the Dollar Tree and we got a bunch of like decorations and we decorated our dining room and we had... Um, their grandma over and we ordered pizza and they just were really involved in the process and I have all of like our planning notes here so this is what we did this summer but for like the fall and the winter and summer and spring I'm just going to have um, these pages set up like this I thought that this was just very pleasing to my eye when I saw someone do this on YouTube you just take a highlighter and you make a line and then I just used cursive to my best ability and I put fall unit study I'm going to have all of my winter unit studies here. Um, this page will be the spring unit studies and then the summer unit study. So last year I think I just did astronomy and then I did the earth study. So I only had two big unit studies so I don't know if I'll have one for every season. And then I also did like a mini unit study on Mr. Popper's penguins and then we did something for Thanksgiving and then we did something for Christmas. So that is how it kind of worked out this past year. And I have also on this notebook page the quarterly um, rhythm. And so I have summer, fall, winter, and spring. And I just did it in a highlighter and I used a ruler. So whatever rhythm we have in the summer, the fall, the winter, and spring, I'll write down in here. What usually happens in our homeschool, since I've been homeschooling for almost, like for three years and we're going on our fourth, I noticed that the summertime we do a lot of stuff in the past. And then the fall we're super hardcore. And then during the winter, we relax like a lot and we kind of like unschool. And then in the spring, we kind of do the same. And then we kind of catch up and try to get all of like our math and language arts done. So I will try to have like a rhythm in here because the winter and spring in Florida, where I live in South Florida, we like to go outside a lot and enjoy the nature and go to the parks and meet up with friends. And then the summer and fall, it's super hot hurricane weather where it's just very, very hot and we usually stay indoors. So we are very strong in our homeschool those seasons and we're still strong in here, but we're way more relaxed. So I was going to do like a rhythm um, page right here. And then for my school routines, I have it set up where I have AM and I have PM right here. Um, I made this little tracker from 7 AM to 3 PM because that's kind of like a window of the day where we do school and we have like open time to play and to hang out with our friends or do activities before dinner. I don't want to write in it as of yet. I'm not 
Um, I want to make sure I have everything I want to write in it on post-it notes and then I will do like my master list and then this can also change out as well like I could erase what I have and then I could switch it up for like the fall and then for my fall school routine um, I could erase that and then go to my winter so if I use the post-it notes maybe I'll be able to just keep on reusing it and making my school routine um, just more flexible and then instead of just having one school routine so I might do that all right, on this side, I have a brain dump for my kids, like whatever ideas that they have for homeschool, whatever topics or themes that they want to discuss and that they want to learn about, I want to know. So I want to write everything down here. This side, I have our morning basket ideas. So anything that um, that came from here or that I have in my mind that I want to do, I want to write down here. This is like undecided stuff that I have Under. labeled. Our co-op that we did last year, which was amazing, has kind of ended because the leader moved to a different state. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do locally for our co-op. And that's just a big decision that I need to make in the next few weeks. And then I was wondering if I wanted to do a four-week school week or a five-day school week. I'm not sure. Last year we did five-day school week. And then once or twice a month we did a four-week school week where maybe they spent time with their grandma. Um, there's a tapestry program. It's a homeschool program um, that meets up once a week that I was interested in. I want to look into extracurricular activities, just some ideas that I've, I've not decided yet that I just put on post notes here. On this section, I have my ideas like piano lessons. I have to get a book for my daughter and then maybe we could do piano lessons at my grandma's because she has a piano there. Um, poetry tea time, our nature walk ideas, party school science experiments, book club, write letters, have, like, and I'll keep this um, with all of my post-it notes on here. Um, as far as this page goes, this is really important to me. I think this will be really fun for me. I have my scripture page and then my motivational quotes. Um, I think it's more for like mom stuff, but I, if we want to memorize certain scriptures for the year, I think I'll put some of them here and then I'll have some encouragement for myself at the bottom. And then my motivational quotes I have a whole page for as well, and I made a little heart to put it all together because I think it's super important to be motivated in your homeschool and know why you homeschool. On this page I have my weekly add-ons. So my weekly add-ons are like things like um, I want to do art for the day, for the whole day on Friday I want to have a fun art day or let's do a movie day on Tuesday and just do language and math. Or maybe I wanted to do like a praise and worship day with my kids on a Wednesday and that's all we do. Just certain special things that I want to add on to my week um, that might be on a consistent basis or something that just might be an idea or two that I have that I want to do um, just for one month and try it out. So that is my weekly like add-ons. These are just ideas that I want to implement in our homeschool and see how it goes. This over here is my memories page of just random memories that I think I want to keep like note of. On this section over here, I have my one-on-one -on -one times with my kiddos, and so I just put highlights over their names. But this will be for my son section, and then I have little bullet points, um, blocks with the highlighters. And so whatever dates that I want to like have a little date time with him, maybe drop my, my daughter off at my mom's house and she can have fun with her. And then over here, I have one-on-one -on -one time with my daughter. So I think... We all try to do that and plan a time to have a special time with your, your kids. And if we don't plan it, sometimes it never happens. So I think that would be a good thing to do um, that I think is really, really nice. And even if I've only done it a couple of times with each of them throughout the year, that's better than nothing. Um, on this section is the read out loud log. And so I just put little bullet points there with the highlighter and any read out louds that we have scheduled for this year, I will write down. So I have not filled that out as of yet. So on this page here, I kept blank because maybe um, I thought there would be some other things I might want to add at the last minute. And I know you guys might have lots of suggestions for me. So if there's any things that you guys plan in your planner that you would suggest to me, please comment down below. I want to hear what you guys use in your planners. Um, but this page, I was going to do like a weekly layout idea where I'll have like Monday through Friday. Like Monday, we do math and language arts, and then we do history. And then Wednesday, we do science. And then Friday, we do art. So that was just an idea to have on this section. And then on this page, I wanted to do um, things to work on independently with my kids. So if my second grader needs help on a specific thing for the week, or if my son needs help, I can write it down here. Um, throughout the seasons and work on those things. Here's a really fun page that I thought would be fun because I know teachers 
um, do this a lot and they use a lot of um, fun, wacky holiday ideas. And I went to the website timeanddate.com. So if you go on that website, they give you a huge list of things to do for each day. So I just picked a couple for, for July. I put video game day, teddy bear picnic day, ice cream day, which is my favorite. <laughs> August, I chose book lovers day, tell a joke day, and then the 17th of August is a thrift shop day, and I'm all about that. So I put some of the ones that I think I would like and some of the ones I think the kids would like um, for each month, and I just highlighted them. And I just thought it would be a fun little way to celebrate like little silly holidays throughout the month. You could do one every single day, or if you're like me and that's too much for you, you can just pick a couple each month. I thought that'd be so fun. My kids are going to love that. Over here on this page, um, I think it's very important to have your vision written down and your mission statement written down for your homeschool year. So that is what I have on this on page. These two pages here, I have my son's and my daughter's extracurricular activities that are outside the home, like whether it be soccer or football or basketball, ballet, dance, whatever. I want to be able to just glance at this page and know exactly what we have planned for them. I usually don't plan like a whole lot, but this year I really want to plan more for my almost um, to be seven-year-old uh, just to get her out and physically active and a part of like soccer and ballet. And then my son loves basketball, so I will write down some of the things that I want them to be involved with and then that reminds me that I have to register them um, for those activities. This page I have their academic and personal goals which will just be from academic to things that they need to work on. As far as their attitude or things that personally I think we need to work on and that I need to focus on for um, the year. And here I have a tracking system and last year I did um, I did what um, Tanya from Project Happy Home did and I loved it but I didn't want to um, write down all the pages in the chapters. So I just did a very simple little um, rectangle where I have my daughter's second grade progress and my son's kindergarten progress. And it's just math and language arts and that's it. I have like the good and the beautiful handwriting, the cursive, and then the good and the beautiful level two workbook. And so I have it like segmented like 50 pages to 100 or if the book is 400 pages like her Bob Jones University math, it's like 100, 200, 300, 400. Right now she's like in the middle of the book and so 400 is the ultimate goal and then that's for her second grade math. And then the same with my son. I put seven chapters for his reading lesson that I would like to do for the year because every um, chapter is about 20 pages or so. So I think seven chapters would be perfect. And then I have... The Good and the Beautiful Handwriting here, and then his Bob Jones University Math. So I segmented it like 100 pages here, 200, and then I marked 300 here, and then I just fill it in with a highlighter. I thought it'd be fun for me to see visually where they're so at. I have a section for my daughter for her book reading. She's really into chapter books lately, so I have a reading log for her, all the books that she will be reading, and then the author, and then when she's completed it. And then on this um, page over here, I have favorite things about the books. I have three little bullet points for each book she read and then I'll just talk with her and discuss things with her and then write down the things I think she really liked about the book in have there. Field trips here which is in the back of the book. I didn't plan really um, well on the order of things but that's okay. So field trips I have every month here so whatever we decide to do I will record or I'll plan ahead of time. I have my unit study checklist here. Um, this should technically be at the front where I have all my unit studies, but I didn't plan well. So like the things that I want to check off would be like maybe some vocab words for the unit study, supplies, home library, media objectives, any arts and craft projects, Bible verses that we want to learn, anything that we want to borrow or purchase, their field trips, any principles we want to print out, and then presentations to friends or family or to their dad. Um, that is kind of like the checklist I have for their unit study that I can glance at. And then here are some unit study ideas, seasonal themes that I have. Um, so and here's the pocket folder. And then here in the back is my wish list for like my Amazon and thrift books purchases. I have my games, my books and supplies that I want to get for the year or that I want to get throughout the year. I thought that'd be fun. And then here's like the back cover of my beautiful planner. All of the colors that I used in my notes section are from these highlighters. So if you guys wanted to know the colors that I was using. These are the pastel color highlighters that I got from the Dollar Tree for a dollar for all four. They're so, so pretty. I love them a lot. Um, go ahead, like I said at the beginning of the video, and give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. 
go ahead and jump over to uh, my friend Tanya at Project Happy Home to see how she set her planner up and Saida from Precious Years to see how she's digitally planning her year. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.